Shalom, Islam, Shalom Aleichem, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, Subhanallah, what's up y'all, good morning, happy Wednesday morning, let's jump right in. Let's be truthful about it, because the Holocaust isn't about race. No. No, it's well, not about race, it's, it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. Let's talk about it for what it is. It's how people treat each other. Whoopi Goldberg facing growing outrage after declaring the Holocaust was not about race, despite six million people who were murdered for being Jewish. Here to react, Fox News contributor and civil rights attorney Leo Terrell. Good morning, Leo. Hi, Carly. Thanks for having me. I was so happy to see you. What's your reaction to this situation? Well, let me use Whoopi's word. Let's be truthful. She marginalized the death of six million Jews. And what makes it insulting is she provides cover for those who are anti-Semitic, those who really try to downplay that the Nazis tried to systemically eliminate every Jew on this planet. All right, y'all, let's dig. So that was Whoopi Goldberg's comment about the Jews not being a race of people. So if any of you have been following me for any amount of time, you know that I've been saying that for a minute and didn't have anything to do with being anti-Semitic. Actually, it just has something to do with keeping Torah, the book that they said was left to them, right? They, they were the chosen people. And that, that lie, amongst some other lies, is how they got to be these people that is called Jews. So uh, the next hour, hopefully... Or well, I'll do an, a part two. I don't want to say exposed because just telling the truth is enough. You know, by, by the book that they claim to be theirs, some of the foundational laws and ways of living in that book versus what you hear, what was practiced, and a bunch of information that I came up on my own today. So uh, <clears throat> I came across this... Um, this article, and I'm not sure what the the article, the article, um, and what I want to say, y'all, the name, like who who puts it in circulation, but it's the Indo-European Ashkenazi Jew is not a cousin of any Arab Semitic Muslim, and when people cite sources, right, um, they just saying they don't agree. And by God, no source here is greater than another source. Y'all always have to remember that when you're dealing with information, disseminating information and receiving it. It's not about who you like. And shout out to the First Amendment, right? And before I start with this, let me explain why the First Amendment is so important. Because um, my point of view will not be the popular point of view, right? And that's cool. It doesn't have to be for me, but for my point of view not to get heard because it's not the popular point of view, is is slavery, so to speak. So the United States of America, under every right that God gave us, protects our right to free speech. Whether it offends you or not, you get the right to do it. Now, speech is expression. You know, you got a right to protest. That's your speech. Speech is assembly. Speech is me doing what I'm doing now, being me, uh, the journalist, media, investigating things that that was laid down that I want to see if it, it holds his weight when I put his feet to the fire. It's not about subduing anything that's that's opposite of what popular opinion is. And everybody know you don't need to protect what's popular. It's it's already got a force field around it because it's popular and nobody wants to go against what's popular. So that's why it's important. So important to have that First Amendment right because it's unpopular opinion that needs to be heard. And the populace can't say, well, we don't like it. This is against what we think. We don't care what you think. That's another reason why it's so important to have a foundational law that can't be altered by which man is in office, which ideology is in office. And that's why it's one nation under God. But once you can't stand in that, you get all these policies, mass mandates, all this shit. Anyway, I'm, I'm off, way off course, but not really. So this article and what I was getting at was the authority, right? Don't let anybody tell you that that's not an authority when what you see fits other bits and pieces of information that you have in life. People like to say it, but it's a puzzle. 
And it's about peace and together the the order that we supposed to live in with with God. How hard is it for y'all to piece together that you need money? Not complex at all, but you spend most of your life focusing and concentrating on that shit when you know lights need to be on, you need to have something, you got to eat. It's not that difficult. The problem with mankind is learning how to operate amongst each other without trying to take advantage of each other, without thinking that your popular opinion is more important than my unpopular opinion. That's the equity of God. But you see what you live in now, and that's why it's important for me, people like me, to always come and give that other side. If it wasn't, it'd be no balance. And look at how small I am and the trouble that the masses go through. Platforms like this one, YouTube, to stop my voice, to come up with community guidelines, community guidelines to curb the free speech of an individual that God made. Going to step inside of God be over me and be the, the go-between between myself and the creator. That sound like anything familiar with religions that y'all worship, be it a Muhammad or a Jesus. All these things are Christianity, all of them. Um, I talked about Muslims being Christians, um, Jews are Christians, and of course, Christians are Christians. And this article that I just came across, it supports everything that I've had in the back of my mind for a while. So it's not like I ran to find the source to support it. I'm standing on it myself. Of course, y'all know what I stood on myself without referencing Jesus, Muhammad, Drew Ali, Elijah Muhammad, uh, Malcolm X, Khalid Muhammad. None of those men, Frederick Douglass, had to stand before law except for me. So it was in my best interest to know what it was beyond popular belief, tradition, or what hadn't worked in the past. I was the one. And I stood and I got what I needed to get. So I'm trusting me and I'm sharing information with people that's willing to take it in. I appreciate y'all that do. And to y'all that don't, you need to check yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like that that day, especially of men, men that come to bicker with men. Because as a man, I'm not letting you lead the way. And if I go into a ditch, I'm the one that's in the ditch. You just stand over and say, ha, 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 I told you. But before my journey, you're going to try to deter it? Like, what kind of feminine ass? This is called the Indo-European Ashkenazi Jew is not a cousin of any Arab Semitic Muslim. And this goes right in line with what I've been saying. The Jews are not Semites and they're not a race of people. Whoopi got used by the creator. Um, The book itself supports... Our creator made everything good, evil, all these things are choices. And everything here is going to be used. Used for the balance of the good of the creator. Whether it's the good or the evil being used to balance it out. It's going to be balanced out. I'm not asking anybody to believe you. I'm telling you what I know. And what I know has me on the other side of that fence. And that's scary to some people. You know, everybody want to know what's out there. How do you live outside and that's what keeps you inside. You know, I, I don't have a belief system. It's nothing to believe. It's nothing to ponder. When it came down to life and death, that's what it was about. It wasn't about being scared. Some people don't want to give up certain things. And that's it. That's the slavery right there. And we're not talking about work for an honest day's wage. They can't keep you out of that. But you also don't need their identification to enjoy that. Um, I'll speak about that at the end of this video. All right, y'all. So here we go. Part one, seeing the successful fraud of falsifying history, the theft of history by the Euro Zionist colonial movement, where European converts to the Jewish religion instrumentalized, instrumentalized ah, the Semitic religious heritage to impose a colonial regime in historic Palestine. In 1948, a warm and aesthetically scaffolding, brimming with numerous epics, not only from religious and media cloister, but also from an academic and intellectual secularism, a whole illustrated pen of Bohemia, refined acrobatics, intellectual and academic pirouettes, 
they got muddy in the aromatic and romantic manner of the return of the Jews after 2,000 years to the ancestral land, the land that God promised the Jews, a skillful claim of false historical rights that follow Indo-Europeans stripping the original Semitic people under fascinating and hallucinatory historical scams. Today, the peoples of the Arab, Persian, Levant, colonial, colonially called the Middle East, are caught between a classic and an anachronistic colonialism called Israel, a neo-colonialism that is the Saudi monarchy and almost entirely dictatorial Arab regimes. In summary, the Middle East today is composed of colonialism, neo-colonialism, and dictatorships. Saudi Arabia, more than an Islamic theocratic monarchy, is a tyranny. And more than a monarchy and a tyranny, tyranny is a neo-colonial entity. With time, the colonizer discovers that the colonial praxis is a very heavy, complex, and complicated logistic method and it is where there, where he solves, discovers another method, neo-colonialism, which consists of hiring natives, creating an elite among them, granting them privileges and power that serve their interests. Saudi Arabia is the largest oil producer in the world. Oil is the resource of contemporary civilizations. And while Saudi neo-colonial tyranny is the most useful piece of the imperial West, Israel's colonial anarchism, excuse me, anar anarchism came to endorse neo-colonialism, and Israel seemed to be the most beloved and admired ally. The betrayal of the corp corporatic Arab Islamic elite in the service of Zionist colonial expansionism. These fucking words, they trying to give me a stutter with my lips, a boo 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 mumble mouth ass nigga. I'm a handless though, yo, watch. Y'all know how black people can't say certain words like specific, shrimp, orange, orange. I said orange. All right, here I go, y'all. I'm going to say the thing that go roof, roof. Wish me luck. Dog. Dog. These monarchical corporate petro dictatorships. Very attractive, very attractive as a stock exchange axis of glamour, splendor, luxury, and elegance, opulence. Their cities, the Pompeii of our times, to stay in power, they must sacrifice their own Palestinian Arab brother people. Otherwise, the imperial forces must replace these dictatorships. Some of us argue that the end of Israel's colonial regime would bring about the end of the Arab dictatorships per se. It is logical that many monarchical Arab corporate tyrannies in the Gulf betray to perpetuate themselves in power. And the blood of the Palestinian people is their salvation. Let us not confuse logic with morality. The, tyranny, the tyrannical corporation of the Arab Islamic petrodollar of the Gulf not only contributes to the disappearance of the Palestinian people, but also to the rest of the Arab, Persian, Kurdish people and cultures in the face of the expansionist Zionist project, project of greater Israel. So they accused Hitler of doing something with, with weapons and machineries that they're doing with politics, basically. And you see other nations joined up about money and not about equity, confederacies, marks of the beast, King Solomon three sixes in his confederacy with these other nations. The amount of gold his crooked ass would get annually from being in business with these other nations that didn't keep the word of God. To justify the betrayal before the Arab multitude, they must do it with manipulation and falsification of the sensitive, sublime, sacro culture, cultural bastons from the sacred feelings and symbols of the Arab identity. Islam, as an example, the Jews and Muslims are cousins. That's what they're saying. They, they making it attractive by saying that. Now we starting to get it. Above all, 
we must remember and almost claim that the monotheistic Jewish Christian Muslim trilogy is a Semitic heritage that is what the Arab world is today. The monotheistic Judeo-Christian Muslim triad is not only a legacy and inheritance of the same ethno-civilization, the Semite, but also as doctrines they have same root trunk and tissue judaism is religion and mother religion of christianity and islam for many years christianity is a jewish sect islam is a judeo christian religious doctrine and the continuity and complement of the legacy of semitic monotheism but zionist propaganda portrayed islam as the enemy of Judeo Christianity, the Prophet Islam, the Prophet of Islam, excuse me, Muhammad is descended from Ishmael, and Ishmael is the firstborn son. This is what it's saying here of the Jewish Prophet Abraham. So I wanted to say that before I start changing some other stuff around, right? Because within the truth, there's still going to be some hiccups, and lies. All of you know that Abraham. This is what we can prove: that Abraham wasn't a Jew; he was Chaldean. So. The beginning of the Jews, they, they admit is with Abraham, who they considered Jew, but Abraham wasn't a Jew. It slides the hands like that, and people saying, well, you know what they meant. Don't, don't do that for your kids' sake, all right? Don't let your kids say, well, you know what they meant. Make every word count for what it's supposed to count. Now, when we're talking about stuff that don't matter in your life, slanging with each other, then that's cool. But when you are in environments that your words need to count, make them count because people will back off you when you use certain words. It's all a trick. It's the difference between traveling and driving. These officers know that as well. And they'll still try you. They'll still stand in dishonor and try to take your rights. But it's up to you to know the difference between these words and what's meant by what. Now, me being naked and void of any information at all, I would just think Abraham was a Jew, you know, coming into this book period. And because this guy is confidently saying, yeah, he's a Jew, or this article is saying that he's a Jew. No, he's not. Abraham was a Chaldean, a Chaldean by the scripts itself, you know. So here is a secular printing, and not that the book is 100% accurate, and it doesn't have to be. All that has to be accurate is the duties that we do in there. But I don't get the gist of Abraham being a Chaldean Chaldean, why that would be mentioned, because it didn't have any significance except that's who he was. Somebody would have to change that with something in mind. And to call him a Jew would fit all this shit going in. So while you still have allies like, if you're robbing a bank with somebody, you're still doing work with criminals, right? So you have to watch them. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but when people pretend that they're doing good, it's still, it's still something in there, something that they're protecting their bad with. That's the only thing that keeping 100% the word of the creator will will excuse you from. You won't take any, any shit. Like he just mentioned, well, I just mentioned him, um, Abraham being... The father of the Jews, and he is not. You can't be Ishmael's father, who who is Islamic or Muslim, Muslim, right? Torah, Islam, Ishmael is just admitted that Abraham is the progenitor of this. So where is the Christianity and the Judaism coming? Where does that become involved in a way of serving and celebrating the Creator? Abraham wasn't a Jew. The Jews had to come in someplace. Where did they come in? And then when they came in, we know what happened. It, they propagated themselves. The Romans helped propagate them. I'll drop that on here as well. We had 19, 20 minutes in, got 40 minutes. Making good time, y'all. All right. Ah. What was that? The prophet of Islam, Muhammad, is, is descended from Ishmael. And Ishmael is the firstborn son of the Jewish prophet, Abraham. Mesopotamia, Iraq, later the prophet of Judaism, 
had his second son, Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob. If this is history or myth, it is of the Semitic people and not of Europe. This is an archive of the Arab ancestors. Again, pushing the Jews out. So when I'm talking about um, policies, religion as policies, you can kind of see it here. According to the, sec the sacred scriptures of the monotheistic Judeo-Christian Muslim tribes, Jews and Muslims are cousins. That is Semitic Jews and Semitic Muslims. <laughs> a Jew or Indo-European roots is not a cousin of a Muslim of a Semitic root, since those who have expanded in the world were not Jews nor Christians, nor were Muslims. That expanded in the world the respect the religious doctrines of the Semitic peoples. Marking the differences, the Marxists did not expand in the word world. What was spread with less success was Mar Marxism. A German Aryan converted, a German Aryan converted to the Jewish religion is not a cousin of a Hungarian Aryan converted to the Muslim religion. The fact of being Jewish and Muslim does not make these circumstances Indo-European Semites. Some Chinese who convert to the Jewish religion is not a cousin to an African person converted to the Muslim religion. Although one is Jewish and the other is Muslim, they are not ethno-Semites. So y'all understand what's going on? A Yemeni, Iraqi, Syrian, Palestinian, Lebanese Jew is not excuse me, that is a Semite, is a cousin of a Semitic Muslim. None of those religions are people. We are in the 21st century of secular values. The colossal Zionist propaganda distorts religion with eth ethnicity to hide the colonial anarchism. Anarchism is anarchy, y'all. Yo. <laughs> Europe weaves and founds its civilization's glory and misery, splendor, and horror from its poly polytheistic cosmovision. Europe does not possess monotheism of its own. Monotheism is rather a legacy of the Semitic people. Today's Arab world, let us imagine Europeans converted to the Christian religion claiming historic rights to Palestine and Chinese Muslims claiming rights to the Arabian Peninsula of the cradle just because they took on a religion. The Israeli is not an Israelite. When was I saying this? I had old videos saying this because these people were put there politically. And so you see they're protected. Their speech, you can't say anything about it, but I'm saying something about it. And it's free speech protected. And this is one of the reasons why um, they control algorithms. And they got a lot of dummy channels bigger dummy channels and it's a part of the war um just like they plan any anybody that can that can do you harm they're gonna look like you they didn't have any um white plants in the, the panthers movement the black panthers was nobody white that could fit in you would see them coming a mile away so they gotta look like you talk like you and it's very few things that identify these people except your ability to stick entirely to the script and judge people on that. If they move this way or that way to what the word of the creator is, you see them. Whether you give them grace or not is up to you, but you saw, and that's all the creator need. Then you can get judged for even standing in it or standing out of it. As for me and my house, y'all know the old Christian saying, we will choose the Lord. They haven't chosen him yet. Still choosing religion. Um, most people, when when they something they like, they set themselves on a, a road where they see that thing every day. Look, just think about being overweight or being fat. You know the dedication that it take me to to try to look the way I look. Fat people take that same dedication to eat. You know, you, you think it's easy just to be fat? They put in time doing that shit. All the donuts and shit they got to eat all the time. They don't do something. That, that, take, that take discipline, too. To just eat all the time and not do shit. But you can... Ch 
change it, the discipline to do it the other way. It's just a mental thing. Your body hasn't died, right, from sitting on the couch, fucking it up, eating all that stuff. So it's probably not going to die. I actually do better from moving other ways, like a block, an hour a day of eating donuts. That's just the hour you need to block out. It's a mental thing. Like religion and being connected to a Jesus or a Muhammad to say, well, I got to go this way. And I'm like, why? Where in his word has it said any of that? And the Samaritans as well. Like I'm, I'm going to play a couple, well, not a couple videos, but some sound bites, some audio um, snapshots, snapshots, audio, audio riffs or whatever to support this even more. And like I'm saying, y'all, you won't find information just in one place in here. This is where you figure all this shit out at. It's like it's leg day, chest day um, for your full body. You're doing different exercises. You'll get it from different places, but if you're lazy, um, it's just like in real life. You're gonna get out of it what you put in it. Um, your commitment to it, you know, that's why I say I practice it, practice it, practice it. And I'm still practicing. Now, that the Indo-Europeans, Caucasians, Slavs, Scandinavians, and short Aryans, that is non-Semitic, have converted to a religion that comes from the Levant, from the Semitic civilization, that does not make those Indo-Europeans Semites. Sure, they are Jews, but they are Jews, not Semites. So where do these people come into existence? So let me let me pull up Abraham too. Y'all wanna rock with me? Go to the um Wikipedia. Abraham. Abraham. Abraham is the common patriarch of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and not Islam, y'all. It says Islam here, but Muslim. Muslim is the religion. Islam is like Torah. It's Torah and it's Islam. And those things together is what is what I keep. I live an Islamic life, me master myself. You know, I'm my own self, Lord and master. Those letters mean that to me. And I achieve that by Torah. Torah is the instructions. Muslims have a Quran. They recite. Jews have a Talmud that I don't know what they do with it. Christians have a New Testament. Some other people, Hasmonians, have the Apocrypha. But I just recently came across, and not came across, whatever moved me to Wikipedia, Wiki, the Samaritans. And the Samaritans been speaking like I've been speaking for a minute. Shout out to Nephew Jarrell. We don't believe the stories to how people believe the stories. We use the stories as a GPS. It's giving you kind of a direction and something that may or may not happen, but you see the dealings and the creator with these people. And more times than not, it's, um, it's a book of wisdom with the stories and the laws entwined and how it worked out. And people want to see it for something that is not. I speak about the laws of the United States of America in the history book, the Constitution of America, who was which forged by these men in America, Abe Lincoln, George Washington, um, John Hancock, John Adams, all these founding fathers, right? Uh, their lives and what they went through and the word of God, as I found out later, is how the laws that they wrote the laws came to be about, but they not the laws themselves. So the Constitution and... George Washington's life, Abraham Lincoln's life, whatever they done, don't change the laws that apply to you. So whether people succeeded or failed to act it this way or that way in the scripts, it don't change the laws of God. And the Samaritans just believe in the first five books, which is the laws of God. You can't compromise the laws of God. There's nothing else added. They believed in ritualistic slaughter and... um. And I don't believe that people got it right. And I'm stepping out on me, stepping out on a stomach cancer. And the creator hand was there waiting for me to land. So I'm stepping out on that sacrifice was not something that the creator had told those people to do. 
Um, the prophet, the scripts Jeremiah supports that. Um, 7, 22 and 23. When I freed you from Egypt, I did not speak with you concerning burnt offerings and sacrifice. I just told y'all do my will, the work, you know, and they were always practice, practicing sacrifices before it was monotheism and they just continued that practice into the monotheism and rewrote the book wherever they wanted to write it at but you can't rewrite the laws you know no one had sacrificed shit in the laws nothing there's no law for sacrifice they have rules rules are different you have rules in your house and then it's laws of the land those are two different things and to have more of a harmony, it's just like the policies now. You got policies, mask mandates. Well, they wasn't above doing shit like that. And because they wrote it down, didn't make it the laws of God. Two stone tablets, right? Two stone tablets. But they had 613 ordinances. Ordinances are torts. Taking your, your God-given rights away. And that happens when you don't live inside the rules of God, like man will set parameters for you. That's always been the case. So Jeremiah 7, 22 and 23 say no sacrifices. So that's it. You know, what those men decided to do was their business. I'm not following them, like follow them right to my fucking doom. When I was a young man going through all this shit, when people was going that way, I didn't follow them in those days. Turned out I was right then, you know. I'm not talking about how I fucked up to my son, what I could have, should have. Always had this kind of discernment. The masses has always been louder than me. You couldn't hear my voice because I wasn't popular. I wasn't the popular opinion. And that's cool. It turned out it protected me. So, Abraham, he is the spiritual progenitor of all believers. Jewish or Gentile, Jewish or Gentile, Jewish or Gentile. So they're claiming that Abraham's Jewish. Let's see. Abraham is called by God to leave the house of his father, Terah, in the land of Canaan, Terah. So what was Abraham practicing? The Abraham story cannot be definitely related to any specific time. They're definitively related. Uh, the Abrahamic story cannot be definitively related to any specific time. And the patriarchal age, along with the Exodus and the period of the judges is widely seen as a late literary construct that does not relate to any period in actual history. And that's what the Christian calendar be in your history. 365 days in a year. But Christianity wasn't the start of this. Abraham was. So why would it be any dates? Who was just writing down dates like that? That came with the Greeks and the Romans. They decided that their literature would be the literature for the rest of the world. And you'll see that the Jews are part of that too. Ah. It was probably compromised in the early Persian period, late 6th century BCE, as a result of the tensions between Jewish landowners who had stayed in Judah during the Babylonian captivity and traced their rights to the land through their father, Abraham. Not Jewish. Not Jewish. If you traced it to Abraham, you cannot be Jewish. He's from the Chaldeans, y'all. Like, And this is Wikipedia, so... By you knowing, by you knowing the origin, and the book is telling you, terrorized the ninth, ninth descendant from Noah and is the father of Abraham, Nahor and Haran. Haran is the father of Lot, who is Abraham's nephew. The entire family live in Ur of the Chaldees, Chaldeans. Haran dies in his native city of Ur of the Chaldees. Abraham married Sarah, who was burned. And the death of Terah, Abraham, Sarah, and Lot depart for Canaan, but settle in a place named Haran, where Terah died. And at the age of 205, at the age of what? 205, God told Abraham to leave his country. 
and kindred and go to a land where he would show him 205. Terra, oh, Terra died at the age of 205. God had told Abraham to leave his country and kindred and go to a land and he would show him and promise to make him a great nation and bless him, make his name great, bless them that bless him and curse them who may curse him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran with his wife, Sarah, his nephew Lot, and the substance and souls that they had acquired, their men. Then he pitched his tent, Sarah. There was a severe famine in the land of Canaan, and so Abraham and Lot and their households traveled to Egypt. On the way, Abraham told Sarah to, to say she was his sister so that the Egyptians would not kill him. When they entered Egypt, the Pharaoh's official praised Sarah Beauty to Pharaoh, and they took her into the place and gave Abram goods in exchange. God afflicted Pharaoh and his household with plagues, which led the Pharaoh to trying to find out what was wrong. Upon discovering that Sarah was a married woman, Pharaoh demanded that Abram and Sarah leave. Mm. And they lived for a while. See, he's still doing this Christian shit. But you heard that he was from the Chaldees, right? The Chaldeans, not Jewish. Pull up the Chaldeans. How about I pull up the Chaldeans? Because that's where he was from. That's how y'all do it. You got to stay on the asses. Chaldeans. Mm -mm -mm. A member of an ancient people who lived in Chaldea, 800 BC, and ruled Babylonia. They were renowned as astronomers and astrologers, the Semitic language of the ancient Chaldeans. That's who Abraham was. So Abraham was Semitic and not a Jew, but they called him the Jewish prophet. Chaldea, a small country that existed between the 10th and 9th century and mid 6th century BC, after the country, and don't go off their times again, the Greeks based time on the earth revolving around the sun. They worshiped Helios and Ra, these sun gods. So they thought that we went around the sun when our God created the sun to warm us. So we are the center of the universe and the sun revolves around us. I don't care what their scientists say. It makes no fucking sense the other way. And my eyes work. Okay, lady, that's much, y'all. Love you. Yes. All right, so where was I? Ch I'll start again. Chaldea was a small country that existed between the late 10th century, their dates, 9th and mid 6th century BC. After which the country and its people were absorbed and assimilated into the indigenous population, Babylonia. Semitic speaking, and it was located in the marshy lands of the far southeastern corner of Mesopotamia and briefly came to rule Babylon. The Hebrew Bible uses the term Kazdim. This was translated as Chaldeans in the Greek Old Testament. <laughs> Greek Old Testament, the Greeks. Although there's some dispute as whether Chaldean in fact means Chaldeans or refers to, we know they was Chaldeans, right? During a period of weakness in the East Semitic speaking kingdom of Babylonia, new tribes of the West Semitic speaking migrants arrived in the region from the Levant between 11th and 9th centuries BCE. The earliest waves consisted of uh, Arameans and Satians, followed a century later by the Chaldu, a group who became known later as the Chaldeans or the Chaldees. These migrations did not affect the powerful kingdom and empire of Assyria and northern Mesopotamia, who repelled these incursions. These nomadic Chaldeans settled in the far southeastern portion of Babylonia, chiefly on the left bank of the Euphrates. Though for a short time, the name commonly referred to the whole 
of Southern Mesopotamia. In Hebraic literature, this was a geographical and his historical misnomer as Chaldea proper was in, excuse me, Chaldea proper was in fact only the plain in far southeast formed by the deposits of the Euphrates and the Tigris, extending about 640 kilometers, 400 miles along the course of these rivers, averaging about 160 kilometers, 100 miles in width. There were several kings of the Chaldean origin who ruled Babylonia, a ruling family referred to as the Chaldean dynasties, named after their possible Chaldean origin, ruled the king at its height under the Neo-Babylonian Empire, although the final rule of this empire, Nabonidus, and his son and regent Belshazzar was a usurper of Assyrian ancestry. Ancient Chaldeans, unlike East Semitic Akkadian speaking Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians, whose ancestors had been established in Mesopotamia at least 30 centuries BCE, the Chaldeans were not a native Mesopotamian people, but were elite. 10th century or 9th century BCE West Semitic Levant, Levantine migrants to the southeastern corner of the region who had played no part in the previous 3,000 years of Samaro, Akkadian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Mesopotamia civilizations and history. So, ancient Chaldees language spoke a West Semitic language similar to Aramaic during the Neo Assyrian Empire. Uh, so look, y'all, Jews, all of this stuff, as you heard in the first part that, um, and if y'all want that, I could text that to y'all so you could read it for yourself. And that's what basically this is all about. You doing all your own research, not believing this shit. And I'm going to Sam Iron now too, right? Um... And Sam Iron now, that's his YouTube channel, um... Uh, I typed that in the description as well, y'all. And this guy is rabbinical. He went to rabbinical school. That was his thing, you know. So I start checking out, cross-referencing what I consider the enemies, right? Because you'll get a lot of information from people who not necessarily support what you're saying, but the truth is, is all I'm after. And they'll share some of it, you know. They'll make an agenda out of it. But it has to be attractive. And generally, people only be dedicated as they can gain some monetary value out of it. That's another way that the creator separates you from truth through money. And you'll be able to get as much as you can see yourself or, or making. It's not going to be attractive to, to tell the whole truth because now... Everybody can be a magician to do the trick, right? You understand that? Who's going to go to see a magician when you know all the tricks you can do them yourself? It's less intriguing. You don't need somebody to, to shepherd you around. So this is from the, the video Gods of Israel, 900 to 720 BCE. And again, this is by Sam Aronow. Aronow is A-R-O-N, Aronow. I'll say Aaron now, Sam Aaron now. And that's on YouTube. Shout out to his channel because the information is there. And if you know how to disseminate or cut through the bullshit by just staying the course, it'll jump out at you. Ad bucks. As much as we like to talk about the Jews as a singular people in the ancient world for their bestly fought for its independence from Judah, very shortly after, perhaps. Princess, and that's just as long as here we go, y'all. As for each tribe or city state, like Chemosh, the god of Moab, who here we inspired their rebellion against Judah. This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between Israel and Judah. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El, or El Elyon, literally the highest god, to whom the Israelites were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices yep. on top of Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria, literally the highest god, to whom the Israel. Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. Samaria. Listen to this again. And after this goes off, I'm going to read y'all Wiki's definition of Samaritans. 
All right. And they keep Torah as well. Tribes were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices on top of Mount Gerizim in huts for each tribe or city-state, like Chemosh, the god of Moab, who supposedly inspired their rebellion against Judah. This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between Israel and Judah. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El, or El Elyon, literally the highest god, to whom the Israelites were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices on top of Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. This common belief in El Elyon is what kept the tribes of Israel united, and ultimately what kept Judah out of the fold. Because as far as the Jews were concerned, the true identity of El Elyon was their local god, Yahweh. This might not seem like a big deal now, but each god had its own hereditary priesthood. So for Judah to have a separate clan dedicated to the worship of everyone else's most important god would always set the Jews apart as off-brand Israelites. It was bullshit. This is why Israel invaded Judah in support of Italia. It's also why it was so easy for the Jewish high priest to simply assassinate her and replace her with her seven-year-old stepson. And it worked. For the better part of a century, Judah was able to stop the bleeding and restabilize. A lot of people who read the Bible for the first time as adults seem to take special notice of the fact that the high priests were usually either corrupt or incompetent. But their power structure kept Judah unified and stable. Compare that to Israel, where Menashe had to constantly compete. So a crooked power structure kept it stable. For dominance with nine usually either corrupt or incompetent. But their power structure kept Judah unified and stable. Compare that to Israel, where Menashe had to constantly compete for dominance with nine other tribes. And with that, now we can talk about Baal. In 760 BCE, Israel was struck by a massive magnitude 8 earthquake. And yeah, if the tribal balance of power was precarious before, things are about to get really messy. I'm gonna stop it right there because it's going. I'm um, more information, but that's just what I needed to support what I was talking about here. And I hope um, it clear up some of the information that it's not just one place that you can get it from. And I promised y'all I was going to go to um, the Samaritans, right? Mount Gerizim. Let me go back to that. Let me go back to that particular spot, too, so I can, when I'm reading, I can support it to Israel, where Menashe had to constantly compete for why Israel invaded Judah in support of Italia. Gerizim, Hamosh, the god of Moab, who supposedly inspired their rebellion against Judah. This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between Israel and Judah. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El, or El Elyon, literally the highest god, to whom the Israelites were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices on top of Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. So now I guess we got to go check out the Samaritan, y'all. Wiki, though. Wiki, wiki, wiki. It's their shit, right? Their book. Samaritans Wikipedia. The Samaritan, Samaritan Hebrew. Guardians, keepers of the Torah. Hebrew. Um, members of an ethno-religious group. Originating from the Israelites. They are native to the Levant and adhere to Samaritanism, an Abrahamic monotheistic and ethnic religion in the Holy Land. When I say Samaritans, that's their ethnicity. Um, Hauser is an ethnicity. Yoruba is an ethnicity. Igbo is an ethnicity. You call them tribes. Okay. Ethnicity. Y'all want to have ethnicities of blacks and whites? Those are ethnicities of uh, Americans. The Samaritans are Canaanites. That's their ethnicity. Different tribes in the land of Canaan. All right? Samaritans believe that their religion is based exclusively on the five books of Moses, the law. Given to the Israelites on Mount Sinai, the Samaritan Torah contains some differences from the Jewish Torah or Masoretic text. According to Samaritan tradition, key parts of the Jewish text were fabricated by Ezra. The Samaritan version of the book of Joshua differs from the version in Jewish scripture, which focuses on Shiloh. According to Samaritan tradition, Joshua built the temple and placed there in the tabernacle in the second year of the Israelites' entry into the land of Canaan. They were Canaanites. 
The Samaritans believe that Samaritanism is the true religion of the ancient Israelites preserved by those who, who remained in the land of Israel during the Babylonian captivity. Um, you hear people talking about land rights. Well, there were some people that stayed and the people that came back, Jews, had an amalgamated religion. You hear that Sam Arnau said they worshiped everybody's gods. So this was Judah who from Sam Arnau's rabbinical uh, education said that they wasn't even one of the tribes. That's somebody that's rabbinical. But since it's established, I guess it don't matter. Nobody's going to unestablish the Jews or who they were. And when you tell the truth like Whoopi Goldberg did, you see what happened to her ass, right? And she on that team. Slapped her right across her lips. All right. The Samaritan version of the book of Joshua differs from the version in Jewish scripture, which focuses on Shiloh. According to the Samaritan tradition, Joshua built the temple and placed there in the tabernacle in the second year of the Israelites' entry into the land of Canaan. Samaritans believe that Samaritanism is the true religion of the ancient Israelites, preserved by those who remained in the land of Israel during the Babylonian captivity. This belief is held in opposition to Judaism, the ethnic religion, not race, of the Jewish people, which Samaritans see as a closely related but altered and amendment, excuse me, an amended religion brought back by those returning from captivity in Babylon under the Neo Babylonian Empire. The Samaritan people believe that Mount Gerizim, located near the city of Nablus, in the vicinity of the biblical Shechem in the modern day West Bank is the original holiest place for the Israelites since the time of creation, the patriarchs and the Mosaic covenant and Joshua's conquest before the establishment of Jerusalem's temple under the Davidic and Sol Sol Solomonic rule. And it is commonly taught in Samaritan tradition that there were 13 references to Mount Gerizim in the Torah. Uh, to prove their claim, in contrast to Judaism, which relies solely on their later Jewish prophets and writings to back their claims of the holiness of Jerusalem. Consequently, the, their views differ from Jewish beliefs regarding the holiest site on earth to worship God designated by Judaism to be a temple at Mount in Jerusalem, but by Samaritanism to be Mount Gerizim. And we just heard my man, who was a rabbinical student, he went to <laughs> see. So like the truth is not profitable, y'all. And it's freeing at the same time. So we got a whole group of people in the world set up by this group calling themselves the chosen people of God. And when you challenge it, not with violence, with the information, and I didn't write any of this, right? So I couldn't falsify any of it. It's white faces, which y'all y'all understand is white that don't agree and they just giving you stuff without any emotions attached to it. And that's the truth. Whenever somebody has a stake in it, you won't get the truth. Um, here's a question. How many times have you seen so-called black people marching for anything that didn't have black involved in it? Shout out to the Canadian truckers, not black truckers, but truckers. It's probably some black guys driving in that, some Arabs. But they out there under one common cause, which benefits humanity. If your battle was for something that you personally identify with a group, you're here for you. You know, LBGT, you being gay is your free speech, right? You, you expressing that. What else do y'all want to say in a society that's governed by God? And God is against homosexuality. Your emotions don't matter. You know, even if I hated gay people, I got the right to say that. But y'all trying to curve the word of God and turn it into something else. And that's a part of the lie that allows the world to exist like this. Whatever's comfortable for people, they good with. You give people their group and you make their group feel special. And they'll allow all kinds of shit to happen based on their group. But... Outside of your group, what have you done for the group of human humans, people? So Black Lives Matter, y'all marching. And my perspective of black 
or somebody else that don't agree y'all have a march for them or what have you achieved for this this black group and the black group still keep investing in this uh generate this lie it just keeps going on and on and on and outside of people not wanting to hear the truth got a couple different adversaries ignorance and fear right some people ignorant so they don't want to hear it and the people that do know they fear the shit so at just about any cost they're gonna try to block the truth from getting out we have 55 minutes in y'all right on time yeah but the same way that lies need attrition the truth just need to be founded and it'll wear the lie out it's the fear, the ignorance that keep people from standing up in truth. If you want the truth, you'll go through some stuff, but the creator will get it to you, y'all. I mean, I'm here. I'm here right now. I don't have any formal training in any of that, and that's good because once they train you, once they educate you on how to do something, you take them for being your expert. The creator made you expert, self, lord, and master, yourself. And once you bow down to these policies of men, you lose all your senses. You figure you don't need them anymore. It's already set up for you. Jews are a race of people. It's something that you're born into. But when you question the foundation of it, it won't stand up. So it's easier to lab label me anti-Semitic than they're not actually proved that they're Semites. Jews will never prove they're Semites by the book that they say they claim. They was hoping that people wouldn't read it. And at one time, the powers that be controlled the book. I.e. The, the book of Eli. They give you bits and pieces of stuff. Because they know. But as long as you believe in... Judaism, Christianity, or being a Muslim, you won't be able to connect to the creator. And that's a part of it. The belief system, right? You got to have faith. You got to believe. I'm like, what do I need to believe? I, I need to believe in nothing. If I can carry it out, I can't. And this thing with the Jews, really a no-brainer. You're not a race. You can't find a bloodline. Uh, the progenitor of these people was from the Chaldeans. And the Jews were just duck and dodge. Same way blacks do. Uh, outrage of violence for blacks. Playing the victim for Jews, but neither one of you can answer. Blacks, how'd you get to be from Africa? Jews, how'd you get to be from Israel? That fight there, the Palestinians, scripturally, those people are um, Philistines. And when these so-called Israelites got taken from the land, it was still people there practicing the word of God, whatever they was called. So you just don't come back years later and say this is ours or some shit like that. Mm -mm. You see by these texts, some people never left. It's a shame the lies that these people called the Jews told. And... The guy Hitler, I guess he was their punishment. This group of people. Matter of fact, let me tap into Hitler. This is more. This is more to lie exposed. And the point of reference that I'm going for as your opinion, Christianity, Judaism, these were the same fold. This is why Hitler, when I let you hear this, it's going to tell you who Hitler hated, what was his political, like who he aligned with. Uh, as politically, and I don't think it was politically that he aligned with Islam, but Hitler aligned with Islam. Um, he, saw, he saw the solid foundation, and I should say that, and that's the only way I could explain it. From listening to this stuff, so 
we can go to the origin of the Christianity, right? And Christianity is definitely older than Judaism. These were the people that they battled directly. They did not battle Jews. Christians and Jews are the same people, subdivisions of. But Islam is something different. Let's go. Around the globe, Europe is generally heavily associated with the religion of Christianity. That's where it came from. Just as the Middle East is usually linked to Islam. The general assumption about European countries is that they are probably at least mostly populated by Christians. Even under the previous regime, religion in all of Germany was in a bit of a peculiar position. The First World War had left German churches on a decline, and a population shifted more to a secular mindset. But the region was still heavily Catholic and Protestant by the time Adolf Hitler came to power. As the new chancellor began to enact his extremist policies and push his beliefs on the public, Christianity in Germany was actually often praised. During some of his speeches, it was made clear that any attacks on the Christian faith would not be tolerated within the regime. In 1933, an agreement was signed that essentially barred the Catholic Church or leaders from being involved in politics, although it did reaffirm their freedom of faith and some of their religious rights. Still, the Third Reich was not a safe place for the Catholics either. Religious schools were shut down, churches were silenced, leaders were detained, and ultimately, state-sponsored atheism replaced the Christian masses. Although the GDR's constitution did protect freedom of religion, the state itself scarcely did so, and it became quickly clear that it would serve the communist regime much better to be an atheist than a Christian. In other communist countries, the promotion of atheism constantly existed, and one of the reasons was, well, there was already an icon on the wall and in the books. The people didn't need another one. Although the East German church was eventually able to adapt and find a way to safely exist under the communist dictatorship, there were still far too many societal consequences for Christians to convince the masses to fight against the state-sponsored atheism. So, as life continued on the GDR side of the Berlin Wall, more and more East Germans became atheists, and therefore would raise their children as atheists, and so on and so forth. Since for many people of any faith, religion is often a result of circumstances and an inherited affiliation, the more Christians that switch to the state-sponsored faithless belief, the more that would soon follow. When people think of World War II, Islam is not generally on the list of things that come to mind. Nonetheless, Muslims actually played a particularly important role in the war and became a significant focus of Germany. In the words of the German Chancellor himself, the people of Islam will always be closer to us than, for example, France. To understand the Chancellor's position on Islam requires some backgrounds pertaining to his general religious views and thereby those of Germany as a World War II power. To a milder degree, of course, the leader of the Third Reich held a strong disdain for Christianity as well, especially the Catholic Church, viewing both religions as weak, absurd, and unrealistic, even though Germany was a Christian nation and Christianity was a part of the European culture, a hatred towards the corruption of the Catholic Church existed as Germany moved to expand rapidly. There it is. Hitler hated Catholicism. He hated the Christian church. Jews fell under that. Your media tell you that Hitler only had problems with the Jews or those, those camps. Only had Jews, dead Jew bodies in them. Or when it was Christians there, the famine and the disease, it didn't ask for ID, whether you practice Christianity uh, atheism. Well, I, I don't believe that the atheists were in danger because they met, made no pledges to anything, right? So Judaism fell under Christianity, the Catholic Church. But this is a historical um, fact. And people aren't talking about, in this, you don't hear them saying Hitler hated the Jews. And any chance somebody got to talk about Hitler and his hatred of the Jews, 
they would come out. He's anti-Semitic. He tried to kill off a race of people. I think we just dismissed the race theory that the Jews are not a race. And use your own mind as Jews in Germany, Jews in Russia, Jews here in the United States of America, Jews in Ethiopia. You got um, conservative Jews practicing Orthodox, blah, blah, blah. You can't have that kind of shit under race. You just can't. So let me play one more thing about Adolf Hitler and how how he really didn't mind Islam because it was founded in, in action. You know, it's not said in this, but I'm smart enough to know he thought that the Christianity and the Catholic Church was flimsy. The Jews belong to that. We 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 check that out, right? All right, let me go to that real quick. I always got to validate everything with the story or the backdrops. And my stuff comes from a bunch of different places. So this is where these Jews fall under the same thing as Christians and Catholics as far as Hitler's concerned. Um, All right. A, uh, and we will create a, a temple. And so the books were still there because they didn't come back, presumably because they were wiped out. Here we go. The Pharisee movement, which was always anti-temple, which wasn't connected to the temple. The Pharisee movement, after after the destruction of the temple, the Romans were in a position where they had to try to find people amongst the Jews who they could work with and who they could sponsor. This Again, by Jews, y'all, they talking about Israelites, and they just comfortably interject the word Jew wherever they want, and you just got to go along with it. That's that confidence that that's why I'm always combative and head button. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. That's how I got the laws that, that the creator, the rights. That's why I walk in it because you're supposed to be combative for what's right. Why would I sit down, especially when it's pertaining to mine? And all of this is pertaining to mine because I have a son and a daughter that live in this world with a bunch of people that rule in this world that don't have the qualifications or the validations to actually rule because you don't rule by money. Like money is not going to make you morally sound. And that's what this world teach you to run after the money. That's a no brainer, but how to act and how to behave is something you need to cultivate in a kid or a child, right? Comes rabbinic Judaism, Let's where go. they had to try to find people amongst the Jews who they could work with and who they could sponsor. Israelites. This becomes rabbinic Judaism. There were some Jews who, who said to the Romans, Israelites. Look, if you sponsor us, we will sit down and we will create a type of Judaism that you can live with, that you can deal with. It's basic. He's talking about Jews like they different people. They're the same people that want to spin off and do their own thing. Like the Canaanites, the Israelites, Abraham, he lived in that land, but he separated himself like he was a Chaldean. He separated himself from the astrology, astronomy, bloodline, still basically those people, right? The Jews don't even fucking exist as far as a bloodline. It's a practice. And they keep trying to establish these motherfuckers like they're people, but they are a practice. We will sit down and we will create a type of Judaism that you can live with, of course you that will. you can deal with. It's basically uh, inward looking. It renounces claims to the Holy Land. It renounces claims to a temple. We don't want a temple. We don't want to rise up and build an army against you. We're happy to be... Um, good citizens of the Roman Empire if you just uh, let us get on with our religion and leave us alone. And uh, and the Romans were happy with that. They sponsored that type of... Uh, they very particularly sponsored that type of Judaism. They gave them grants of land, they gave them money, they gave them scribes, they gave them assistance. And uh, so at the same time as wiping out the more dangerous forms of Judaism... Well, from what we heard... Judaism wasn't dangerous because they would serve any God that you told them to serve. And rabbinical Judaism was an invention. Not, not sitting down with these people, 
they actually came up with it themselves. You know, people that was willing. We heard that that would be of the people that would take a ride from the people because they found benefit in it, but the people didn't. So they made up these lies, historical myths, and the Messiah, both sides. Jewish waiting on the Messiah to come. Christians waiting on the Messiah to come. Islam, you master yourself by the order of the creator. This shit becomes childlike after a while, y'all. They actively sponsored the benign form of Judaism that became rabbinic Judaism. The rabbis, who are not priests, they're scholars. They're, they, are, they, they, they have a, a, essentially a pacifist point of view. They, they put these people in charge on purpose. So I'm over y'all. I'm an hour and 10 minutes in. I'm a back out right now. And I want to shout out everybody for coming through. I do appreciate y'all all the time. Um, so many names now, so I'm going to forget everybody. But y'all know y'all here, and y'all know I appreciate y'all. So, Islam, Salam Alaikum, Alhamdulillah. Masallah, Subhanallah, Inshallah, Alhamdulillah, y'all. All of it, man. I mean it, too. Like, happy to be here. And if y'all here... <laughs> Breathe in and appreciate that, y'all. You don't know when that day is coming to an end, and not in a sad and crazy way, but just enjoy it. You know, you might think that you're having a bad day until something bad really happened. And if you can have a bad day, then up to that point, everything must have been all right. And I bet you didn't celebrate as loud as you complain, right? Keep the same energy both ways, y'all. Peace.